Hi everyone, my name is John Mangahas. I'm a librarian at the Chicago Public Library. Hello, my name is Aldo. And I'm also a librarian at the Chicago Public Library and we both work for the Children's Services and Family Engagement Department. Thank you so much for joining us. Aldo and I are here today to present to you some of the best of the best books of 2020 in the category, Informational Books for Younger Readers. I'm gonna get things started with our first book. Have you ever taken a road trip and driven through a woodsy or mountainous area? Roads make it really easy for people to drive through areas like this, but what effects do these roads have on the animals that call these places home? As much as roads provide convenience to humans, they are really hazardous and very dangerous to, for animals to cross. And oftentimes, animals need to get from one side of the road to the other in order to find food, shelter, and their families. In this book, author Katie S. Duffield explores how humans have been working to address this issue by creating safe crossings specifically for animals to use. Throughout the book, we see a wide range of crossings, from simple ropes to underground tunnels and massive bridges, all designed to protect animals to allow them to travel over, under, across, and through the roads that cut through their natural habitats. Real life examples from around the world show the innovative ways humans have made it a point to design and build safe passages to protect the animals whose habitats we've invaded. The author utilizes repeated language to highlight the ways the animals can navigate the crossings while the illustrator has created clear and vivid images of what they look like. This is a great choice for readers with an interest in animal conservation, and it could be a great way to introduce engineering projects to young builders. Honeybees earn that name because all they do is make honey all day, right? Wrong. Honeybees, also known as Apis mellifera, or Apis for short, are actually very hardworking insects for the entire short time that they are alive, which is just over a month. And they do so much more than just make honey. Some of the honeybees' duties include eating, cleaning, nursing, building, and even fighting bees from other hives that try to invade their hive. In this beautifully illustrated book, author Candace Fleming chronicles the lifespan of an average honeybee while detailing all the varied tasks it is responsible for during its short but very productive life. Fleming also skillfully uses repetition to build up anticipation for the little bee's first flight which leads to a panoramic four page spread by award winning author, I'm sorry, illustrator, Eric Roman. This is just a little preview of that as the bee gets ready for takeoff. In addition to the focus on the bee's busy life, there's also some really great supplemental information, including a really beautiful diagram of a bee's anatomy, a note on the important role bees play in helping produce the food we eat, even more notable information about bees, and some really great resources to check out for readers who are buzzing to learn even more about these busy little, little creatures. You know who's actually been a super busy bee lately is my buddy Aldo. Aldo's been getting ready uh, to prepare, been preparing some really great uh, book talks for you. So what do you have in store for us next, Aldo? Thanks, John. So today I'm actually going to talk about Facts, Opinions, and Robots. So while the first two books on our list contain several wonderful facts about animals, our next title explains the difference between facts and opinions using robots. Facts, Opinions, versus Robots, written and illustrated by Michael Rex, takes a comedic approach to introducing what exactly is a fact and an opinion, and why it is so important to know the difference. Through clever and often hilarious interactions, these colorful and charismatic robots debate whether their statements are facts or opinions. For example, two robots determine that it is a fact that they both have two arms, but it is an opinion that one of them is a better dancer. Important concepts are also introduced to the robots, including listening to others' opinions, rebooting the dialogue, and working to find common ground. Most importantly, we learn that sometimes we must wait for more information to claim something as a fact a very timely and important lesson that is vital to for all media consumers, both young and old. An excellent and interactive read that can be used to combat the ever-growing spread of misinformation. Speaking of factual discovery, do you have an explorer on your hands who constantly brings you their treasures? Do they enjoy discovering objects and art and learning about their history? Then Charruco, Peruvian archaeologist Julio C. Tello, written by Monica Brown and illustrated by Elise Chavarri, is for you. Follow the amazing life journey of Julio Cesar Teo as he makes major discoveries all around Peru. Julio, also known as Charruco, which means brave in Quichua, was a proud indigenous Peruvian 
who used his work to bring the exposure to uh, many, many of the amazing accomplishments of his ancestor and their sophisticated ancient civilizations. The illustrations, including end pages and borders, show some of the arts and artifacts of his major finds. The afterword provides readers with even more information on Julio Cesar Tillo, like his dedication to provide education to indigenous people and his founding of the Museum of Anthropology in Lima, Peru. This book is great for all ages, but especially young explorers ages eight and up. Como la flor con tanto amor. Our next title tells the story of another Latinx icon in Selena, Queen of Tejano Music, written by Silvia Lopez and illustrated by Paula Escobar. This biographical account of Selena Quintanilla's life follows her journey from humble beginnings to a successful career as a trailblazing singer and fashion designer. Author Silvia Lopez wonderfully highlights Selena's struggles and triumphs on her path to prominence, creating an inspirational narrative for all young readers. The colorful and vibrant illustrations bring to life Selena's captivating personality and her many iconic outfits that depict specific moments in her life. The illustrations presented by Paula Escobar, as well as information listed in the back of the book, also celebrate Selena's culture as a Mexican-American growing up in Texas. A true celebration of life, this book reminds us of Selena's importance as an artist who paved the way for other Latinx entertainers and has left a lasting impact on the Tejano music scene. This engaging, narrative-heavy picture book biography is great for Selena fans of all ages and perfect for children ages eight and up. Now I'm going to send it over to my buddy, John. He's going to talk a little bit about some lesser known heroes and trailblazers. So after seeing the title of our next book, you might be wondering, how can a person be a verb? Well, verbs are action words and Shirley Chisholm was a woman of action. As author Veronica Chambers writes, Shirley Chisholm understood almost intuitively how and why verbs are not just words about being, but doing. Wor verbs are words that move the world forward. And the same can be said definitely about Shirley Chisholm. Born in New York City, Shirley was a nursery school teacher, a state assemblywoman, and she was the first ever black woman to be elected to Congress. She ran with the campaign slogan, unbought and unbossed. Throughout her career, Shirley strived to improve people's lives by listening to them and honoring their unique differences. One very significant way that Shirley Chisholm moved the world forward was by running for president in 1972. The author states that she became the first black person and the first woman to make a serious bid for the presidency. Although, although this accomplishment may seem very far removed from modern times, the author very clearly draws a direct connection between what Shirley Chisholm did and the achievements of some of her modern day counterparts highlighting the importance for young people to know about those who came before to pave the way for people who continue to make history today. Shirley Chisholm was a trailblazer and the author uses her story to inspire today's young readers by asking them, what verbs will you choose? In this book, author Rita Lorraine Hubbard has written a compelling and inspiration ta inspirational tale chronicling one woman's long journey towards accomplishing a lifelong goal. Mary Walker was born into slavery in 1848 and wasn't freed until she was 15 years old. Slaves were forbidden to read uh, and to learn to read and write. And even after being freed, Mary went straight into work seven days a week to support her family. One day, Mary encountered someone who handed her a Bible. She knew it was filled with words, but did not know what they meant. She vowed that one day she was gonna learn to read those words, but life kept moving forward. Mary got married and had children and kept on working for many, many more years to provide for her family. Even as an older woman, Mary would attend church where she would hold a Bible that she, couldn't, she still couldn't read. Eventually, many more years passed. Mary's sons and husband passed away and Mary found herself all alone at the age of 114. And that was when Mary decided that it was time to learn. She signed up for a reading class being held in her building. And for more than a year, she put all her efforts towards learning to read and all of those efforts paid off. Mary learned to read. Her accomplishment was celebrated by many and garnered her some really, um, a, a lot of attention, including from a man from the US Department of Education who declared, Mrs. Mary Walker, I pronounce you the nation's oldest student. Mary continued to be celebrated for many more years until her death at the age of 121. And her story stands as a true testament to the adage, 
You are never too old to learn. This next book is about a hometown hero who was inspired by our city, Chicago, to write unique, award-winning poetry and stories about life in the city. Growing up here, Gwendolyn Brooks was surrounded by poetry throughout, throughout her childhood, and it remained an important part of her whole life. She began writing poetry at a very young age and had her work published in a national magazine before she even started high school. Gwendolyn continued to read, learn, and write poetry into adulthood. Even when she was a busy wife and mother, she spent her evenings in a poetry class and learned about more modern styles of poetry. From there, she was inspired by her Bronzeville neighborhood to write poems filled with details about her own life and her observations of the lives of those around her and what she saw in the streets. They were also filled with hope, despite the challenges she and her neighbors faced in their lives. Gwendolyn was a prolific and persistent writer. She sent her work out until she got published, and her very first book was called A Street in Bronzeville. Brooks's second book, Annie Allen, would go on to win the Pulitzer Prize for Poetry. It was a truly joyous event for her family. She would go on to write even more memorable poetry and receive recognition for her work, including being the Poet Laureate of Illinois and the Poet, poet Laureate Consultant in Poetry to the Library of Congress. Her ability to craft words into poems that reflected people's lives and touched people's hearts was nothing short of exquisite. From one prolific Chicago writer to another, The Power of Her Pen, the story of groundbreaking journalist Ethel L. Payne, written by Elisa Klein Ransom and illustrated by John Para, tells the story of a journalism pioneer and the first African-American press correspondent for the White House. Ethel L. Payne grew up right here on the south side of Chicago in the wonderful Pullman community. Inspired by the stories told by her parents and grandparents, Ethel was always looking for ways to learn more about the world around her and how to use her writing skills as a tool for activism. From her frequent trips to the public library to becoming a journalist for the Chicago Defender, Ethel's many inspiring life moments are highlighted throughout the book and brought to life by illustrator Para's distinctive and inviting folk art style. Many of Ethel's groundbreaking accomplishments are mentioned in this book, including her trip to Japan during World War II to cover the plight of the African-American soldier in the military, and also as a journalist. Ethel knew it was important to bring up issues of civil rights, social justice, and the stories that were ignored by the white mainstream press. She would often fearlessly stand up to her peers and was not afraid to ask the tough questions, even when questioning U.S. presidents. In an author's note, Ayn Ransom discusses her own attempts at being a journalist and the fearlessness it takes to be an, an effective one, showing us how inspirational Ethel was for all future journalists. A solid read about a lesser-known hometown hero and a worthy addition to any children's biography collection. Now, many of the books previously mentioned today focus on inspirational women who defied naysayers and followed their dreams. For our last title, A Girl Like Me, written by Angela Johnson and illustrated by Nina Cruz, we are introduced to a number of uniquely creative and aspiring young women who embrace their individuality and reject societal limitations. This inspiring picture book combines Johnson's empowering poetry with Nina Cruz's signature photo collage illustrations to create a wonderful story about a group of diverse girls who are equally imaginative, adventurous, and inventive. Among doubting onlookers, the girls stand up for each other and show support as they remind us that anything is possible and to follow your dreams no matter how big or aspirational. Not even the sky is the limit for these girls, and in the wonderful photo collage images, really illustrates the larger-than-life personalities of each individual. The closing spread features headshots of each of the girls pictured throughout the book and gives readers a chance to learn about their real-life dreams and unique personalities. A truly wonderful book to inspire the next diverse generation of girls working toward fulfilling their hopes and dreams. Um, I would just like to thank everyone again for joining us today. Just as a reminder, those were just 10 of the best informational books for younger readers from 2020. For a full list of all of our best of the best titles with annotations, please be sure to check out our website, shypublib.org slash kids best of the best. There you will also find all of the 2020 best of the best videos and list and a really wonderful archive of best of the best books and titles from uh, previous years. So thank you again for joining us. Hope to see you again next year.